could not, uh, for some other reason, they could not be your father law. We actually just touched on the night law. We actually continue to take us through this coronavirus law. We wa you watch the Lord, you take us day by day, Lord. We give you thanks and praise for all the things you have done for us, Lord. We just thank you, Father God. We actually continue to bless you. He bless you, bless you. Holy mercy, Amen. 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 On tonight. Amen. 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 Thank God for His grace and His mercy. We say praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Amen. So glad to see you, you, you here tonight. Amen. We just thank God for Extreme Grief and Praise Temple on tonight. We are uh, starting a Bible class and we're looking into a new book of Paul's writings on tonight. We're going to be looking at the book of Colossians. And on tonight, uh, as we do, as I've done in the past, is that I want to talk about what the book is supposed to talk about. Amen. Okay. A lot of times uh, we read the scripture and the scripture is, is, not, um, is not given its, its, its proper context. Uh, I'm not going to say that the scriptures misused, uh, but sometimes they are. Uh, but we need to know the context in which Paul was writing so we can get the full meaning of what Paul was trying to say. I believe what God is trying to say to us at the church. So tonight is about the introduction to the book of Colossians. We have done Philippians, Galatians, Ephesians, and Paul's writings, and now we're in Colossians. Colossians is not a long book, but Paul writes this specifically to the churches at Colossae and about to deal with some things that were going on in the church. Also, I ask all those who can do the work of evangelists and share us tonight. Amen. We can't do it without you. So if you do that for us and with us, share us with your family and friends uh, that we may be able to encourage them out of the word of God on tonight. Amen. Amen. So tonight we're going to be dealing with one of another one of Paul's uh, writings that Paul wrote from prison. Paul, this is considered a, a prison epistle. Paul writes this and, and you'll see as we talk about it tonight and the book of Ephesians at the same time. So please make sure you have any questions or comments. Please make sure you ask us. Uh, why, the reason why I want you to ask questions or comments is because uh, what happens is the Bible says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And the way we hide the word in the heart is by we are able to uh, understand what the word is saying. So when you ask a question, that tells me that you're processing, that you're understanding the word of God. Amen? Okay. Amen. And that's why it's important. So uh, I'm going to start. This this particular introduction is taking out of, i got to get credit where credit is due, is out of the um, uh, uh, the Life Application Bible. So so I'm using that Bible here to talk to you. I've looked through several introductions. This introduction, I think, gave for us. It's a long introduction, but, it, but I'm not going to talk about every point that's in here, but I just want to put it on the screen so we can see. And the first point he talks about is that the introduction begins to talk about your brain. Amen? Mm -hmm. You have a, an awesome and amazing brain that has the ability to do all these things. React, re reason, consider, uh, mediate, learn, imagine, understand, philosophize, know, perceive, evaluate, theorize, reflect, and predict, and communicate. It's interesting that that, 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 that the introduction starts here. It's because is that this is one of the main things that Paul sends a letter to Colossae to come against that, that we, even though we do this in our brain, we're not saved by these things. That's right. Amen. We're not saved by our intellect. In an intellect. We're saved by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so Paul is starting off here in the introduction as he talks about, begins to talk about the brain. Amen. And the incredible power of the brain. Praise God. We, we sometimes, uh, what happens, the, the tendency for people is that pride can creep, creep in. Amen? Amen? And what happens is, as pride creeps in, praise God, we start thinking ourselves highly, more highly than we ought to think of ourselves. Amen. Amen? And we know the Bible warns us against that because, you know, praise God, you know, it talks about how, 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 how those, God, there's three, these six things that the Lord hates and the seven is abomination. And two of those six things is a proud look. Amen? Amen. So, so we have to be cognizant that, that, that we have to get understanding, get knowledge, but we cannot allow knowledge to fully dictate our lives in Christ. We have to have, faith has to lead our lives. Amen. Amen. And faith in who? Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so I, I, I put this up here because, you know, we have we have an uh, understanding, praise God, that, 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 that Paul was dealing with people who thought they had inside information. Inside information, otherwise known as Gnostics, and we'll get to that in a minute. But how many know, even when Jesus was talking and preaching and teaching, when they came to Jesus, uh, uh, remember when John's disciples came to Jesus? Mm -hmm. And John's disciples said, are you the one or should we look for another? Right. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't have no inside information. What did Jesus do? He went and what? Healed the sick? Mm -hmm. 
He went and raised the dead. Yeah. He went, praise God, and restored limbs. And then he tells the two disciples of John, go tell John what you've seen and what you witnessed. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So, 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 so he also, when the Pharisees came and, and talked to him, he says, don't ask me, why don't you ask the people what they've seen? Mm -hmm. So the information of God, I, I, we talked about it a few weeks ago, how, how the revealed word of God, God revealed it to us that we may know who he is. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise God. And he revealed it to us that we may be able to obtain this thing called salvation. Mm -hmm. I want to be saved. Mm -hmm. and I hope that you want to be saved too. I, I, hope, I, hope, I hope that you do not fluff in your, your nest here in this earth. So fluffy that you don't want to leave it. Amen. 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 But, you know, we got we to wear this world as what? A loose garment. Can we say amen? amen. So, so this is the philosophical system that Paul was dealing with. The Gnostic system emphasized the mind and the thought of that salvation could be obtained through knowledge instead of faith. So that's the purpose of the book, is that Paul was, was, com was, combat was combating these thoughts creeping into the church. And if we're not careful, guess what? If we don't stick with the Word of God, yeah. if we don't stick with the Bible, if we don't stick with the things of God, amen, all kinds of things will creep into the church. Amen. 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 And, 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 and guess what? And that's all the enemy wants us to do is get away from the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. And, and you might say, Pastor, why are you so hard on the Word? Or why do you always get, keep giving the Word? You put the Word on the screen, you put the Word here, you, and so it's you give the Word. Because that is what the Bible says we're saved. By the wash of water, by what? The word of God. So remember, remember, we are going to keep the main thing, the main thing. Amen. And the main thing is what? Your salvation. Amen. Amen. So Paul was trying to help the church here because there was a system, a Gnostic system, trying to, in, 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 trying to invade the churches at Colossae. And this, in, this knowledge is acquired by those who obtain these secret mysteries. Isn't that interesting? Praise God. And not by and not by studying on the normal process of learning. And it was a strong appeal to what? Human pride. So Paul was dealing with what? A proud church. Paul was dealing with a, 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 a teaching that was erroneous. False teachers. Amen. And then Paul, Paul sent this letter here to try to get them back on the straight and narrow. The word of God is designed to get us back what church? To keep us where? On the straight and narrow. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So God wants us to stay on the straight and narrow. That's why I come to Bible class. That's why I study the Bible. That's why, that's why I've read Psalms, the book of Psalms, amen, 20 times. Because I'm trying to stay on the straight and narrow and not let pride and right get into my life. Amen. Okay, so let's talk about this real quick. So let's talk about Gnosticism, what Paul was dealing with. It distorted the Christian theology and twisted Bible truth in order to support its own concepts. Now, does that sound familiar for today? Amen. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Amen. It sounds familiar that, 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 that we have to be careful, church, that we don't take the Bible and make it say what we want it to say to accommodate what we want to do. Amen? Amen? Amen. Y'all thought that was new, didn't you? It's not new. It's as old as the devil. Because what did the devil say? The devil, how did the devil, how did the devil get out of me? He told him what God said. <laughs> he said, God has not, has not God said, thou, thou shalt not surely die. So, so if the devil understands the system of taking biblical concepts and twist them to your own uh, 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 ways and whims, so you get out of it what you want. Praise God. The Bible, amen, is teaching us to make sure we stay with the Word of God. Can amen. we say amen? amen? Now, I'm going to say one thing here also. We cannot take one passage of Scripture and make a doctrine out of it. The Bible says line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. The Bible supports itself. Amen. And what happens is uh, uh, you have to be cautious Praise God uh, with people who uh, try to build our false teachers who try to put who try to build a full doctrine on one scripture. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. To get it to do what, what they want it to do mm -hmm. instead of what the real intent of what the word of God is saying for it to do. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm taking time tonight to go over the introduction of the book so we know what the book is for. So that when you read Colossians and, and the next time you read the book, 
or we go through the book, you, it'll open up your understanding of what God was trying to say to the people. Amen? Amen. All right, so perhaps the most foundational of these false teachings that matter, watch this, was that matter was inherently evil. This is going somewhere. And the only spiritual, and only the spiritual or non-material is good. That was, that was one teaching. Okay, we'll keep on going before I, before I comment on that. What, what does this lead to? This leads to denying the doctrines of creation. They didn't believe in creation. And in the incarnation. And the question they asked was, how could God take on a natural body, which was considerably what? Evil. Elevating the role of angels. We're going to deal with angels in this. Because some people think that uh, believe in the worship of angels. We need to worship God. Amen. And God commands the angels. Amen? Mm. Praise God. Uh, 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 and, and reduce Christianity to just another religion. Mm -hmm. How do you know that Christianity is not just another religion? Mm -hmm. it, is, it is the religion that has Jesus in it. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said what? I am the way. It's interesting. The disciples asked Jesus, Lord, show us the Father. And he said, they said, have, we, have I been with you so long that you don't know who I am? He said, when well, you have seen me, you've seen the Father. Mm -hmm. So this Gnosticism teaching was teaching against the incarnate or the, the manness of Jesus Christ. And what's the problem with that doctrine? The problem with that doctrine is that if you can destroy the humanism of Christ, you can destroy, you can destroy his role that he did in defeating sin in the flesh. And if you destroy his role to see sin in the flesh, then, then guess what? There's no, there is no sacrifice in the flesh for your sin. So guess what the next thing will say? You might just go ahead and do what you want to do. That makes sense? So, so Paul was writing against these things. And, and, but Gnosticism would take a little bit of this and a little bit of this religion and a little bit of here and there and put it together and build their, their, their faith system. And the last time I checked, Mama didn't let you go eat at everybody's house. So I know I'm somewhere, know where I'm going, don't I? Amen. Because you keep eating at everybody's house, sooner or later you're gonna get what? You're gonna get sick. And what is happening today, church, is that some of some some individuals, and that's why I always encourage people to get in a ministry and get get grounded in a ministry, get rooted in a ministry. Because you go on here on Sunday, you go on there on Monday, you Facebooking on Tuesday, you TikToking whoever's preaching on Wednesday, uh, you Instagramming the scripture on Thursday, <laughs> and by the time you get to Friday, you, you, you're, you're confused. <laughs> That's why you got to get rooted and grounded somewhere so that somebody can, can consistently teach the word and you can have a teachable spirit. See, some people don't have a teachable spirit. What I mean by that is that when they read and hear the word of God, the first thing they want to say is, well, I thought this, I, I, I thought this is the way it was. Right. And when the word of God comes, they cannot have, they cannot correct them. They cannot let the word of God correct them. Right. The word of God is designed to correct you. Praise him. Amen. And having a teachable spirit, praise God, tells me that I can take what God has said in his word, incorporate it into my life, and then change the trajectory of the way my life is going. Why come to church 20 years? Why come to Bible class every week? Why come to Sunday school every week? Why come to church every week? Hear this good old word. No God's talking to you. You're still moving in the same direction. Because you won't allow the word of God to get in you and change you. Amen? That's a dangerous place, and that's a dangerous person. Amen? So, so the word of God is designed innately to change us, church, to move us, to make us go in a way that God wants us to go. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise God. So any questions, comments before I move on? Anybody? All right. All right. So what was happening at this church at Colossae was that this, this Gnosticism kind of combination of these concepts was gaining a foothold in the churches there. All right? 
So what, what these Gnostics were doing was they would take a little bit of this Gnosticism, of this, of this, of this enlightenment of information, thought process, and they would take a little bit of Judaism and stick it together and for create their own thought process. That's dangerous, isn't it? That's why Paul has wrote this letter to Colossians. It is there to correct erroneous teaching. Full-fledged Gnosticism did not appear until the second century. In any event, Paul wrote to refute the error and get believers back on what? Church. Back on track. Amen? Amen. So what happens, so, so how does someone, so Eric, does anybody know how this relates to us today? How does it relate to us today? It relates to us today in a way that we, we encounter people who have been taught a certain way for so long that when the, when the truth of God's word either comes through the Bible or through the man one of God or through revelation, they have a hard time accepting it. Amen. Praise him. Yes, sir, you got a question about me? Yes, sir, go ahead. No, I was just literally going to say the same thing. Yes. When, they, when the truth comes, then they turn around and reject it, which also leads us to a, a place where we are with uh, the form of godliness but not knowing the truth right. about that. Right, right. And you know what? Sometimes uh, 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 we have to frame the truth in just giving people the word of God. Amen? Amen. We need to just give the word. You know, this is what the Bible says about that. How are you going to refute what the Bible says about that? Well, you know, man, the first, every time we hear about the Bible refusing, well, you know, a man wrote the Bible. That's, that's one of the first excuses. <laughs> a man wrote the Bible. Well, the Bible, the Word of God says that they were they wrote as they were inspired by the Holy Ghost. Even when you come to God, what does the book of Hebrews 11, 6 say? It says that uh, uh, we got to first believe that he is. If you come to God, you got to believe that God even exists. And that he is a rewarder of them that what? Diligently seek after him. So first of all, I gotta believe that God is. I gotta believe. so so if I can so if I can build the building blocks of denial in certain areas, as I build a building on top of it, it denies the whole building. And that's what Paul was dealing with there in his church in Colossae. Totally different than what he was dealing with the church in Ephesus, though he wrote them at the same time. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Amen. So that's why, church, when you read, when you lift the scripture out of one book and another scripture out of another book. We have to make sure that that, that that scripture is pertaining to the right context of that book. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Because remember, I'm, I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it again. Paul wrote 13 letters, wrote 13 books in the New Testament. Amen. And every single one of those letters, except for one, Philemon, was written to the church. Amen. So the message that Paul gives in Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. He's writing to, to save people. Amen. It ain't to the sinner. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is written to the sinner man. So if you uh, understand that, pray God, the promises that are in the, the 13 chapters, the 13 books that, that Paul writes are to you. That you're not saved. Now come on and get saved. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, get in the church. Get baptized and full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Get in the body of Christ. Then those things open up unto you. Yes. Amen. amen. But too many times, people keep passing off the benefits of the saints to the sinners. Amen. And they teach it like that. Y'all know where I'm going, though. We talked about it on Sunday. And this we know that all things work together for the good. Amen. Of them that what? Love God and call according to the Lord. That's written to the church. That ain't written to everybody. Amen? So, so that's why it's important for us to understand the context in which the scriptures are written for and what purpose they are. Amen? Amen. Any questions, comments from anybody? All right. Praise God. Let's keep on going. All right. So what did Paul do? What Paul did was that he highlighted the preeminence of Christ and the importance of what? God is living. Amen? As you read Paul's letter to the Colossians, use your God-given mind to evaluate your own belief system. One thing I've challenged the church to do is that I constantly, I'm constantly looking at the Word of God 
to see if the word of God is true. Amen. What do you mean by that? I, I look at I look at the book of Acts. I look at the principles of baptism. I look at the, at the principles of, of, of being filled with the Holy Ghost and see if these things are necessary. Amen. And I keep coming back to that they are. I don't need no amen, and I'm going to just talk tonight. Because some of us really believe what we believe, but we don't know why we believe it. Right. I know why I believe. I know why I believe in baptism in Jesus' name. I know why I believe in being filled with the Holy Ghost. I know why I believe that it's important for me to live a life of holiness. I just understand why. I know why. Because the Bible says that all that get, you get what church? Get an understanding of why you're doing what you're doing. Praise God. So, so church, you've got to constantly evaluate our, is what you're doing, is it lining up with the scriptures? And if it is, I applaud you. And if it isn't, I challenge you. I challenge you tonight to see what the Bible truly says about the concepts of the things that you're dealing with and facing with. Amen. In the word of God. And when, and when you come to a revelation of God, I pray right now that you're able to receive that revelation that God has and you're able to walk in. Amen. 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 Because we're, you know what, we get, we're, we're hard-headed. Amen. We're hard-headed. We, and we know everything. We don't know nothing. Amen. Amen. So, so church, Paul, Paul was trying to get the church to, to, to look at what he wrote and try to reevaluate uh, 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 the system of what they're believing and is it actually going to work for them. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Alright? And look what it says. Is, is your belief system based on God's word and centered on Christ? That's where we have to stay at. That's why I keep saying over and over and saying here lately, keep the main thing, the main thing. The main thing is about focusing on Christ Jesus Christ and him crucified. Because it's so easy today, praise God, to go to a ministry and they'll, they'll talk about love, they'll talk about faith, they'll talk about the blessings of God, but 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 you'll never hear them talk about the crucifixion. You never hear them talking about, praise God, you gotta come out from among them and be separate. Because that's that your flesh don't like that. Praise him. And guess what? What happens is people who are hungry for the God word. People are hungry to know what God is saying. Amen. Come into the into these places, and they think that's all it is that it takes, amen, to have a relationship with God. Right. I'm not knocking that. I think it's great. If you're not a church goer, go somewhere. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Sooner or later, pray God, you got to hit God, and you got to hit God's word, and you got to hit Jesus, and you got to hit him dying, him buried, him being rose again. Amen. 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 And that he died for the removal of your nasty, stinky, disgusting, filthy sin. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Praise him. He dealt with that. Now, see, we don't want to deal with that. We just want, we just, we just want to have love and faith. We just want to love and have faith. <laughs> Praise him. It's more, it's, love and faith is a part, but guess what? It's yeah. not the most important thing. Amen. The most important thing was that he was what? Wounded? For our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of a peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we can get healing today. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you have to so you gotta ask yourself, where is the foundation of your belief system? Is it in Jesus or is it not? If it's not in Christ, then I challenge you to get it into Christ. Amen. I pray you put it on Christ. Because uh, heaven and earth is going to do what? Absolutely. Pass away. But all I do for God is going to what? It's going to last. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Or, here it is. So, so we have to understand, church. Do you believe in the word of God and trust in Christ? Or do you believe on your own ability and your own philosophy? So that is the, the great thing that Paul is dealing with here in this church. Amen? Amen. All right, let's keep going. All right, let me see if I can get this. So we know, so let's talk about author was Paul. That's true to Paul. Paul says that he's an author. And I'm going to skip through a couple of these very quickly. We have to read all these because we'll go back to the Word of God anyway. So Paul is the author. Paul wrote this, amen, and he wrote this 
from prison. In the first verses, one through through two, in, in first in first chapter, is Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, my brother, to the holy faithful brothers at the church at Colossae. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. So Paul is the writer. So Paul addresses all of the beginnings of his books in this way. Amen? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say something right here. Now remember, church, this is called Bible study. We're, we're digging deep into the Word of God. All right? I, I'm sorry that this may not be that entertaining, but it's good to me. Amen. You know, too many times we want to be entertained. Want to, you know, I don't have a lot of pictures tonight. I don't have a lot of, but I want to. I want you to try to focus for these about these 40 minutes. I'm not going to stay long. I want to stay on about another 10, 15 minutes. And if we don't finish, we'll pick it up next week. But I want to focus in on why Paul wrote this letter. Amen? Because it's very important. It's extremely important. Amen. That the apostle writes this letter. All right? Okay? So he identifies both the sender and the receiver of the letter. Praise God. And the rest of the epistle are also uses his first person. So Paul says, I, I. So he writes from a first person perspective. This is how we know uh, Paul writes in a certain vernacular. Okay? All right? Now watch this. Uh, back it up here on the side here. Let me back it up. So, as with Philippians, Paul's uh, uh, authorship was affirmed by the early church fathers and not been seriously disputed. Uh, during the course of the year, over the centuries, different writings have been, have been, have been disputed who wrote those. Uh, Paul, this one is not one of the ones that have been disputed heavily. One of the strongest arguments for Paul and the author of Colossians is letters in relation to Philemon. Philemon was a, was a prisoner that got away. I think we're going to talk about that. And Paul writes a letter to let his master take him back. That's what that whole, and, a, and that's in the Bible. Praise God. So Paul writes a letter to try to get that person to take him back. All right? Uh, both letters, both the book, the letter of Colossae and the letter of Philemon were sent to the same city by the same messenger. And, they, and all both these books contain the same names. So we see here, and this is one of the greatest things I like about this, is that so many times we think, we think Paul did everything himself. Paul had a team around him. Get a team around you to do ministry. Stop trying to do everything. I'm getting in trouble, D. Stop trying to do everything yourself. As great as Paul was, he had Timothy, Onesimus, Archippus, Ephorus, Mark, uh, Archippus, Demas, and Luke. So Paul had a team around him. So use the people that God has blessed you with. Yeah. You know me, I'm trying to give everybody a job in the church. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody pastor, why are you trying to give everybody a job? Because this is what Paul did. Yeah. So, so I'll take a lesson. If you don't get nothing else out of this, you know, you got great people around you. Yeah. Put them to work. Let pull off a little bit of your responsibility and authority and put it on them. Yeah. And let them do the job. I let them do the job in their way. Because everybody ain't going to do the job, the same job, the same way. They got to do it their way. The Bible says, know them, what? That labor amongst you. How do you know they labor amongst you? By, by, by giving them opportunity to do something. And see if they execute it. Anybody know people, anybody know pastors trying to do everything in town? I ain't doing that. Y'all ain't killing me. I'm trying to let the deacons deacon. I'm trying my best to let them do that. I'm trying to let the singers and the praise team up here singing. I'm going over and sit down. Unless they sing my song, I might jump up and sing something. <laughs> I'm letting the usher usher. And you got to do that. Do we have Bible for that? I think we do, don't we? Jesus had 12 disciples. Did Jesus do everything? He didn't do everything. Okay? Go back. Let's go back a little further. Y'all remember Moses? Y'all remember Moses, don't you? Moses was dealing with the people, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Moses' father-in-law said, Moses, it's too much for you. Get some other brothers out there to help you. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that God took the spirit off of Moses and put it on them. And they dealt with helping Moses out. Mm -hmm. And it was good for Moses, and it was good for the people. Amen? So, Paul had a team church. 
Use your team. Develop your team. I thank God that God has given us a great team here at Praise. We all try to work together. Amen? And try to make sure the mission of the church moves forward. All right? Uh, uh, so, uh, let me see here. I'm going to move on through here. This is just a repetitive thing. Uh, so, let's talk about some of the similarities in the, in the letters, okay? So, so, the letter between Colossae and Ephesians has some, some, some similarities between those two. All right? So, um, Colossians and Ephesians. Um, both were to be read aloud in the churches. So when you got a letter from Paul, there necessarily was not somebody preaching. The apostle writes a letter, and the letter is supposed to be written to what? To everybody. Amen. An open letter. So when so these what we call now Bible books are actually letters in by somebody to a group of people. What happens is when they become what they call canonized and they become validated, they, they now become scripture. And we can live by the scripture that God gave us. All right? Uh, 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 we learned that now. If you ever take ETA, I might teach it again this year, in a couple of years. But we learn all that in studying these books. Amen? Amen. All right? So the letters have similar style. So both letters are supposed to be written. Enter. You get a letter, you write it, read it out loud. Okay? Both letters were delivered by the same messenger. All right? And the letters contain some of the same expressions, your faith in Jesus Christ and your love for the saints. That's found in both books. So this is why there's so many similarities that they said that Ephesians and Colossians. Uh, and as with any writer, a writer writes in a particular style. Amen. Amen. So, so Colossians is written. And uh, let's look at another one. Another similarity in who we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. So when Paul writes these same concepts in different letters, he's trying to hammer home something. Amen? He's trying to let us know, praise God, that he, we, have, we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. I'm glad about it. Anybody else glad about it? Amen. Amen. I'm glad I got redemption and forgiveness of sins. Letters have similarity, similar prayers. And similar in the unity of the body of Christ. These are very functional messages for the church today. Church, we got to be unified. We got to stay together. We got to hold, lay aside our, our differences and hold up the banner of Christ and move forward working together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now that Paul is trying to let the church know. Okay? We found, you'll find out, instructions for households. We went through the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians. It's awfully quiet in here. Well, I started talking about husbands love your wives. And Jesus loved the church. Uh, it was real quiet. <laughs> and gave himself for it. It was real quiet when, I, when, when we were talking about husbands obey, wives obey your husbands. Uh, it was, got, got real quiet. <laughs> But Paul was what? Paul. Only thing Paul was dealing with was that when you have order, you have the ability for execution. Mm -hmm. Where there is no order, there's no execution of a plan. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So what Paul was talking about when he talked about these things is that when things are put in proper order, then you can execute on the plan that's put, put, put before you. But he talked about it being a mission. And these other people in here are what? People who have submissions in the overall mission. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Any questions, comments? This is helping anybody so far? Amen. Anybody learn anything? So look at some differences real quick. F is, F, the book of Ephesians is a little longer. Uh, the central theme of Ephesians is church body of Christ, while Colossians is church as Christ as the head of the church. So what so what happens is, is that... Um, you put the book of Ephesians and the book of Colossians together, and you get the perspective of, praise God, that we are the body of Christ, the church. All right? That's the book of Ephesians. Then you get the book of Colossians, and we see that Christ is head over that church. So it's very good to look at these two books together so you kind of get a complete understanding that Jesus is our head and we are his body. Amen? Amen. Praise God. 
All right. Uh, Ephesians has no hint of, let me see what it says here, a controversy. Ephesians doesn't deal with it. Ephesians doesn't deal with this Gnostic, with this Gnostic heresy, because that was not going on in that particular church. Amen? He dealt with it at Colossians. All right? All right? So, let's look at the setting. Paul's in a Roman prison. It was written about 60 AD. About, remember, how, long, how many years have passed since Jesus has, has, has risen and ascended? About 30 years. So, so the writings that Paul, so 30 years is enough time for the message of Christ to get out, for the message of Christ to, to begin, to remember, to, to begin to flow from Jerusalem, for Pentecost to occur, all right? But remember, Pentecost occurred how many days after the resurrection? 50, 50 days after the resurrection. How many different people were in J J uh, Jerusalem during Pentecost? All types of people, weren't they? Remember those 3,000 souls that were added to the church? All those 3,000 souls that added to the church didn't live in Jerusalem. Those 3,000 souls that added to the church were left Jerusalem and went back out to their communities. And when they went back out to their communities, some of them opened and started churches. Started teaching about Jesus Christ and him what? Crucified. And the outpouring of this thing called, this thing called the Holy Ghost. Amen. This experience that they had. And they began to teach it and talk about it. So then groupies of people began to, it started where? In houses. And as they had a house church or they had a gathering. And then next thing you know, from these house churches, they began to grow and begin to develop. And then we found out. It wasn't not even until later on to the 3rd, 4th, 5th century that even the concept of a church building became on the scene. Mm -hmm. This whole concept of church building is something that was not a concept during the time of Christ. People had church at their house. Mm -hmm. That was out of necessity. And that's where they started these churches. But those churches grew. And now we have a need for this type of facility for a local place set aside for praise and worship of the Most High God. All right? And remember that the church concept is actually built upon the synagogue concept. If you went to a local city and you had 10 men who probably had families and there was not a, 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 a synagogue there, a place of worship, those 10 men could come together and form a synagogue. And out of those, and, and, and so with those 10 men, you had 10 families. Mm -hmm. From those 10 families, praise God, you probably had at least 10 wives. Because some of them still had more than one. Amen. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Amen. <laughs> and if they had 10 families and 10 wives, if all of them had two or three, four children, so that tells you right there, you would have 10, 20, anywhere from 40 to 60 people to occupy the the synagogue. He had women, he had men's ministry. He had women's ministry. He had children's ministry already. Y'all with me? Not only did you have that, with 10 families, you had enough financial support to run the synagogue. I'm gonna share something with y'all. Y'all sit down, y'all sit down. Come on. If you follow that particular strategy, the best way to open a church is at least start with 10 families. <laughs> Not you and your mama. <laughs> you and your wife and your two kids, the Lord had called me to a church and all I got is me and them and so. I'm going to keep on going. Somebody ain't going to agree with me. That's okay. But if you do it, if you do it, how it's set up, your, 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 uh, your percentages of success go way up. Amen. I'm not saying that the church can't start with it. I'm not saying that. But God has left us a plan. Mm -hmm. If we work the plan, the plan works. Mm -hmm. That was free. I think it helped somebody. Or hurt somebody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so Paul talks about he's written, he, he wrote from prison. He had a fellow prisoner, uh, Articulus, there in verse 4. So the setting was Paul's in prison. So I'm going to keep on going here. We can read this later. And uh, let me see here. So what happened was, Paul was in prison. Paul was in, on house arrest. But Paul could get all the guests he wanted. 
So what happened was uh, Paul gets a visitor, Ephorus, who was visiting Paul or was in prison with him and told him of the problems at Colossae. So there was somebody who left the church, went to Paul. Paul said, you know what? I need to help this church out. Paul never actually visited or opened the church at Colossae. Amen? So Paul did start churches, but this one church he didn't. He just assumed the apostleship or the leadership of the church by writing a letter. Because someone came and told him about what was going on. Amen? All right? So, what's the audience? Believers at Colossae lay out. So, so Colossae is about 100 miles from Ephesus, laid in an area where now Turkey is. I'll, have, I'll put a map on, this, on the screen next week, all right? So I can show you where it's at. And uh, so, remember, when you're walking, 100 miles is a long way. Amen. But this man walked all the way to where Paul was from Colossae, from Colossae, to, ask, to talk to Paul about what was going on in the church. Amen? Amen? Turkey to Rome, that's a long way, church. Rome is in Italy. Turkey's in another country. You know, walking there all the way to Rome to see Paul. Because Paul was in prison in Rome. So evidently, he, need, he had a need. He was looking for some answers. Amen. Praise God. I'm glad he went to Paul to find some answers. All right? Let me keep going here. Uh, 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 I'm going to keep on going. Uh, I'm going to keep on going here. This is just some other things. All right, so let's talk about the audience of Colossae. Colossae was a mixture of people. It was native people of Turkey. It was Greek settlers and Jewish descent from Jewish families who had left the area during the persecution. During persecution. All right. So, so there was a mix, mix of what? Pagan religion. No religion, Judaism, all this is going on there at Colossae. So as people, as you know, people bring their customs right into the church. Mm -hmm. And when they brought their customs into the church, guess what happened? Some customs don't match with others. Right, so they get what rise in the church? Conflict and confusion. Mm -hmm. Amen? But church, even though we embrace different cultures in the church, we should be able to find some, some unified thought under the umbrella of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? It's going to take your Holy Ghost to do that. Praise Him. Have your input. Let people know what you need. It's okay. We'll, we'll try to meet your need. Amen? Yeah. So, so all this stuff has been happening during, during this time. And all these different people were going on. Although Paul traveled through Pyrrha and the second third missionary journey, he had lived for, in Ephesus for three years. It seems he never visited Colossae. Yet Paul considered Colossae as well as Laodicea and, and Herapopolis to be in an area of his responsibility, probably because the churches in the city had been indirectly founded by him during his powerful ministry in Ephesus. So what happened was Paul would minister in Ephesus, people would leave Ephesus and go from there and open churches. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, let me see how far my time got up tonight. Uh, let me see. We'll, we'll stop here tonight, okay? So, uh, Ephesus and Philemon had been converted to Christ during the time of Philemon. The church man started by Ephesus had been, and been who had been sent by Paul to preach at Colossians. Uh, Ephesus probably began to work in Laodicea and Ephesus, and that's in chapter number four. Okay? So uh, I'm going to stop there tonight. I think, I think I've talked enough tonight about the introduction. So next week we'll finish up the introduction of, of the book of Colossae. But the most important thing I want you to leave with you tonight is that as we get ready to prepare our hearts and minds and dig into the word of God at uh, Colossae, uh, in the book of Colossians, I want you to know that God wants us to get in the Word. Amen? Amen? He wants us to get in the Word. He wants to know why. Every time you open a book of the Bible, you should answer the who, the what, the where, the when, and the why this book is in that Bible. Amen? Amen. And that's why, that's, and, and what that does is it helps us as people not to take the scripture out of the intended purpose for which it was it was meant to be written for. And what that does is that it keeps us out of error. And we have to ask God to help us 
to listen in the context in which it was written so we can really glean what God is trying to say out of the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as we go, we're going to pick up here next week. So join us next week. We'll continue in this introduction. And uh, we got a few other things we're going to say about the introduction. We'll get to the Word of God. But I really want you to know that Paul is writing this letter to counteract false teaching, humanism type of, type of teaching, philosophical type of teaching against faith and trust in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Also, teaching against Jesus coming in the flesh. Jesus came in the flesh, church. Amen. He died and rose again. Amen. Praise him. And we have to main, keep that at the forefront of our belief system. Amen? Amen. We're going to pray, Father. We're going to say, Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy on tonight. Thank you, Lord, Father, what our eyes are seeing and be able to hurt on tonight. As we look into this book, Lord, help us to open up our hearts and minds. Help us, oh God, to look at this word of God. And the Bible says, prove me now who will say, Lord, will I not open you the windows of heaven? Try me and prove me. We're trying to prove you, Lord, that you reveal yourself to us in a great way. Help us to receive you in Jesus' name, according to your ways, and we bless your name. Somebody say amen. 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 And God bless you. God keep us our prayer. We're going to pick up here again next week. And remember, uh, we do have your Giveify, your Cash App. Bless the house of God. Amen? Amen. Bless the house of God. We try out. Everybody can get $5 a night. Get $5 a night. And we're going to pick up here again in Jesus' name. Otherwise, we'll see you on Sunday, which is Mother's Day. And we wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. Amen. On Sunday in Jesus' name. God bless.